are hello. now live. Hello, this is Anne and Tom Hick. Say hello. Uh, Anne is married to Tom, and Tom is our VP of Education in this Initiatives here at Makey Makey, and I am Colleen Graves. Oh, goodness. I have to close my own. Uh, YouTube was like playing. I could hear it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hello again. This is our second episode of Let's Invent. Um, hello to those of you who are joining us live and um, those of you who are seeing the recording. We'll see you later, I suppose. But uh, today we're, um, we just thought, Tom and I thought, since we're all at home, uh, we're actually always at home working. And we thought it would be nice to invent together and make stuff together and just kind of have fun and spend 30 minutes um, you know, creating stuff. And you can do things either with a Makey Makey or without. So today we're focused on books. That's why I have this beautiful library background. Uh, and Anne is going to show us how to, um, how to make book people, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what they're called. So I don't know, Anne, you should actually send some. There's a store here in Austin called Book People. It's okay. kind of the most amazing bookstore ever, so. And um, Colleen, maybe we should start by saying that uh, although I'm sitting here with my banana um, hoodie and we're with Makey Makey, there you go. We're, we're um, not just talking about Makey Makey stuff. Although today, uh, Anne's gonna be talking about uh, book dolls or book characters. And I looked at them and I said, oh, I can attach a Makey Makey to that, which I'll show at the very end. Um, but we're going to be talking um, in this series about all kinds of things um, that are that we just like creating. So uh, you might be uh, joining us uh, and learning about things outside of the world of Makey Makey, or we might be focusing just on Makey Makey stuff. So um, it's uh, things that we think are fun to do at home uh, and that I like doing and, and doing with the other kids. Yeah, and we are, uh, we have, we're live with teachers that are coming on and students that are coming on. So we have changed the chat rules because uh, apparently children still are being children and that's quite normal. So we're, ha we're glad you're here with us. I will say that was not me earlier, Colleen. <laughs> all right, go ahead, Tom, tell us, all, tell us what we're doing today. Yeah, I'm gonna hand it over to Ann. Yeah, hey, I'm Ann, and I'm going to teach everybody how to make um, cardstock. Um, regular printing paper probably won't work so well. Um, you could make a, a very flexible or lightweight book doll with that, but a file folder it works best. Um, and on the blog, there will be a Google Doc where you can access the detailed directions for how to make this. It's pretty simple. And it also has a pattern. So I'll show you, whoops, I bumped that, is that? I think it's good. Okay. Um, so this is my file folder that I drew a pattern on. Let me see, is that okay? Yeah, it's and, um, and so what you wanna do is cut out the pattern on the dark line and then fold, of course, where it says fold on the dotted lines. And again, if you don't have a file folder and you're using cardstock, ideally your cardstock is a nine by 12, which is probably an uncommon size. But if you can find a piece of heavier weight paper or cardboard even that's that size, that would be ideal. Um, once you cut out your pattern from your cardstock or your file folder, it will look like this. And I'm gonna move that folder to the side. So it's gonna look like this. And then you get to decorate it. Um, you have to realize that once you fold in these tabs, that's how it becomes the book. And the book can be decorated with paints. You can use markers or crayons. You can also use clays and I use Sculpey clay um, and I bake it. And then I use tacky glue to glue it on to my background book. You can also um, attach the, edge of the book, the cover of the book, with a button and put a little tie on it so that you can have an attachment point to actually close your book. So there's just some ideas. You can also decorate it with um, colored papers or even fabric. 
So I've used all of those when I make the book doll. And do you have a finished one we can see real quick? I do, okay. I do. So Tom, can you take these things mm -hmm. over? Right. So I first started making these with um, younger people. And really you can do this with all ages because the characters will, you know, will be inspired partly by the age of the person doing it and partly by what the assignment is or what you're wanting to focus on. So this is one that my daughter did when she was little. She was probably seven or eight. And of course this one's made with some decorative papers and some clay. And then the way that we closed it was through this elastic cord. And so that's what mm -hmm. hers look like. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and you can also, this one doesn't have it, um, but as we made these, we told stories before we started. So we came, we came together as a bunch of young girls and um, they each came up with a story they wanted to tell through their book doll. We shared that together. Now you can, if you have more time or you want to, write the story on these flaps, both on the interior and you can write it on the exterior. This looks like a really fun activity um, for librarians to do with students based on picture books or um, or even if we went older with middle school or high school and we could make we could make like fantasy characters and then have the story told through each little page. Right. You could have a historical figure that you wanted to tell the story of or someone you admire. So here's another one. This one is attached with a button and a little elastic cord and it's made with fabric. So all the fabric was glued on and then there was stitching around the edges and of course the face and the hands and what it's holding are made out of clay. Wow, look at that. Um, but you also can do it, like I said, with very simple supplies. Here's one that I made with my Snapchat emoji. <laughs> um, and That's I just, cute. Uh, I printed out the emoji and glued it on, but the rest of it I just drew and painted in with acrylic paints. So this one I actually told a story, so I'll read it to you. Flexible and teeny, Anne was a yogini. Hmm. One morning in the fall came an inner call. While consulting with the runes, Anne was listening to tunes. She heard a voice still and low, urging her to learn banjo. So that's that's so cool. I was looking at it when you had it closed up and I said, I thought, um, I wonder if you could do this where you change the character as you open the pages and then that's totally what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the inside is always a surprise. You don't necessarily know what's going to be revealed there as it's a book, right? It's yeah. always, always something new. Um, so Tom has one to do that is um, involves the makey makey. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna switch it in here. Uh, oh, that is a this, really, I really, I like, I wanna say real quick, I'm gonna spot, uh, change the spotlight so we can see your face if you wanna move close to the cam, shoot the, the computer camera in. Uh, oh, I think it's really cool how, um, <clears throat> how, how like, how anybody could do this. this is really simple. Like it's just a nice like little cross hair section and we could make so many complex ideas out of it. So it really kind of goes with our makey makey theme of like things that can be really easy for younger kids or things that can be more complex for students that want to be more complex. So I just really like the, I was thinking about like as an English teacher, how I might want to do this with my students and have them maybe think about the character in the beginning of the story and their mood, right? And then how that mood changes throughout the story. You can actually change what happens as you open the page. Sure. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Can make it, um, you know, you migrate from one thing to another, depending on what you want to put on those flaps. Yeah. And then you can have some something that they're holding on the interior, even made out of clay or a piece of fabric. So mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that for literacy time today in homeschool, in the Graves homeschooling that's happening, that's what we're going to have to do today. We're going to have to make little book people. I know you call them book dolls, so I called them the wrong thing, but I think it was because of the bookstore that I called oh, them. Oh, it's totally fine. Book characters, book people, <laughs> book dolls, whatever you want to call them. I'm a yeah. doll maker, so I think in terms of dolls. But Yeah, I like yeah. them. All right, T Tom made one, a book doll, and he hooked it up to Bakey Makey. And of course, because Tom loves uh, minions. 
as my uh, 16-year-old daughter says, I, she said this morning, I've forgotten how annoying minions are because she heard me playing this, the audio uh, uh, from this little uh, book doll. You know, so, the banana jacket and the, um, and the, <laughs> the minions is like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I wish I could take credit for making this particular doll, but Anne made this one for me. Oh, it's uh, really cool. And, so the day I met a minion, so what Anne was talking about with her, with this doll, um, this character, this book character, is that she told a story as you unfold. And so that's one way to tell a story. Uh, and of course, there's many ways to tell stories. And this one, I connected to the Makey Makey. And uh, so my story is, let's see if I can uh, make sure that the volume is up. This week I brought my uh, connected uh, speaker here and let's see if that helps uh, this week. So uh, this is the story of when I met a minion. And uh, I, when I first met the minion, uh, it, the minion said, uh, wait, put out its hand and I can uh, touch right here in the corner. Did that audio come Oh through? yeah, I love yeah. the minion <laughs> So uh, if you're not familiar with minion talk, it said, oh, hello. And then I told the minion, you look kind of strange. And the minion said, <laughs> yeah, he's saying, look at you. And he's laughing. And then I said, wow, uh, you can actually de de determine what minions are saying. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've learned when I was in college, I learned minion. Um, <laughs> So then after we both kind of looked at each other and laughed a little bit, we, uh, well, we actually did laugh together. <laughs> and then we became friends and we sang a song. Ba, 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 na, na. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, and if you're curious as to how I did this, um, for those of you who are new to Scratch, uh, there's, it's very basic um, coding that we have here, and we'll have how to do that, uh, how to add audio clips uh, in Scratch that are unique to specific keys. So what I did is I just assigned uh, these audio clips that I found on the web to the up, down, left, right arrow keys. So I, I uh, am controlling those um, sounds. Uh, I can do that by the keys on the keyboard. <laughs> so that's the uh, right arrow key, but I can also control the same audio sound uh, by uh, controlling this, uh, this right here. By <laughs> well, slightly different. I, I, I hit the wrong one. But if you're wondering how I did that, I'm using a uh, tape that is conductive. And uh, this, this is an example of how I did that. Uh, this, uh, what I have here, let's see if I can get my marker, is I dedicated um, uh, to each one of these buttons, I'm gonna call them a button. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one on the underside here. Uh, each of those buttons are just like this right here. This is a little exaggerated, but what I did is I, attached an earth uh, alligator clip uh, to one side, and let's just call this the up arrow key. And so I had an alligator clip here and an alligator clip here. And when I touch here, that bridges the gap. My one finger bridges the gap and I make a simple button. Now, if you're wondering how I did that on the back, because I have this green alligator clip connected to earth, and if I flip this over, oh, wow. I'm going to turn this off. That's complicated, um, is, Tom. It, it's a little complicated, but if you can remember this right here, that at each one of the buttons has to be connected to Earth. And then the other, I'm, I'm sorry, not buttons, but each strip has got to be connected to Earth. No, I have that right. Each button, if I call this a button, yeah. each button has got to have an Earth. And then the other side is going to be connected to uh, the up, down, left, right arrow key. Oh, Tom, pause yeah. for a second. Let's let's like um, let's talk about that face to face for just one second. 
Yes. I think that's actually, oh, you just, your volume sounded better. So I think that's one of those things that, that people, oh, my makey makey has an invisibility cloak. <laughs> by that. Uh, that's one of those things, because this project you're showing is a little complex and we could do it really simple. And I actually just was working on um, the lesson for Sketch It, Play It, uh, for the student version lesson, which I'll talk more about those in a second. But, uh, and I was drawing out the earth and the space, but what you've got there is like almost like a circuit board. So what I want to say for anyone who's new that hasn't seen a Makey Makey is when you press, when you hold earth, which I'm doing with my right hand and you press space, that is like tapping the space bar on your computer, right? So that is, uh, that's what you're doing. And then the space bar is in scratch is playing the minion sound. But then the other ones are the other keys, but you still have to have that earth every time for every, every conductive touch pad. I like to call them conductive touch pads. Invisibility cloak of the makey makey. So, so to, to going back to what Colleen's just saying here is what I did is I connected this green alligator clip. I dedicated that to earth. And if you trace this, um, I, I, uh, uh, earth goes to each and every button. Now here's a, here's a pro tip. I needed this earth uh, to uh, cross over this line here. So I needed to make a bridge, if you will, with this blue tape. So now this, the earth is not in contact with oh, this all Tom, the time. And Tom I did the White, same over here. What you did is part of what's important about that, what is conducted project is that masking tape is an insulator. So you insulated that circuit right there. And yes. so you've got earth, you can put the other keys going over it if you just use something like, uh, if you use something like, uh, like masking tape. Sorry, I was reading the chat. I don't think there's a particular instructable for this project, but there are lots of projects similar and we'll find them and post them. And maybe I would hope Tom would make an instructable about this for us. On this one, yes. I should make an instructable about this. Uh, on, uh, so for those of you who aren't in familiar with our instructables page, we should uh, post the oh, yeah. link there. We're gonna do that at the end. Yes, yes. So there are many, many projects on Instructables. In fact, Anne is going to be uh, building an instructable about how to make book dolls. Oh, awesome! So, um, uh, so this is this is one way to add sound effects. You could have music, you could have voice, uh, and I'm not limited to just four sounds. Uh, mm -hmm. I can have up to eighteen. Uh, Tom, but, will, you, will you turn it over and I kind of I kind of made you stall in the middle of that. Will you just explain that circuit again one more time? Because I interrupted you and I think. Oh yeah, yeah. So so uh, on my makey makey, of course, everything is I, I gotta complete a circuit. So what that means is that this green alligator clip I've dedicated to Earth. And I actually wrote Earth on this uh, um, book doll so that I knew when it was came time to connect this today, this morning, that I would know where to connect it. So you'll see Earth is running to each and every um, one of these buttons. I'm calling them a button. Uh, so that, uh, in fact, let's let's just do that. Let's see if I can touch this one. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll see if I just touch this, that doesn't work. And if I just touch this, that's not working. But if I touch both of these at the same time, the, and this is the earth. <laughs> so now I've got sound to my book doll and, and this earth is, is crisscrossing over top of this uh, up, uh, I'm sorry, this is the right arrow key uh, because if I just laid this conductive tape right on top of here, it would always be on. And that, that would be playing in a loop forever. So I just put tape to make a bridge. And uh, I, I, I have another thing here that uh, I accidentally made. You'll see masking tape is mm -hmm. right here. Watch what happened. Uh, I, I discovered at, too late that I oh. to see, see this button here that I made? Yeah. You when I it. closed it, it touched these other buttons. 
and completed a circuit by accident so that when I put my rubber band on, uh, it, it was always touching. So I had to go back and put masking tape here so that it wasn't always on. So the next time I make one, I'd probably take that into consideration right there uh, and put my buttons so that they wouldn't overlap. So uh, that's the um, idea behind that. That is really cool. And I wanna share that because uh, someone's asking about the tape. So the conductive fabric tape that you're using there is similar to what's she called shielding um, that people that we use in laptops for circuits. But also, um, I really love it. It's, it comes in our Inv Inventor Booster Kit, but you can buy it on Amazon if you need to. And that tape is really great because copper tape, which we've seen people use a lot, which is also known as slug tape, is really sharp and can cut your fingers. I've had a nasty copper tape. Oh, I didn't see what you're about to show me. Yeah, that, but the fabric yeah. tape is, you've got a bird's nest of tape. I, I got some, the best thing you need, to, I'll tell you how to do that. But that fabric tape is great because it's soft and it's malleable and it won't cut you, but you do have to have scissors. Whereas copper tape, you can tear, you do have to have scissors to cut it. Uh, Tom, you could actually, one, one thing I love about unrolling tape is it's kind of like unrolling a ball of yarn. It's a nice mindless activity, but you could actually put that tape once you roll it up nice in a Ziploc bag and just pull a tail out. Uh, Josh Berger told me this tip. And then you can just use a regular Ziploc bag to hold your tape and then it won't turn into a nasty bird's nest like that. Um, Chibi Tronics also been, on I copper. Had a conversation with Josh earlier because- Yeah, because you've got a crazy- Copper tape, you can put a bead of glue around the outside uh, to hold it together too. But if you don't have that tape, you can use foil and a glue stick, which I'm going to show you. Actually, I have a couple minutes. I'm going to unspotlight your video, Tom. Okay. Yeah, there's the tape. Are you going to show how to cut it, or what are you doing? Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, this this Showing tape it. is uh, unlike copper tape, like you said, in that it is, it's more like fabric. It's yeah. not. Uh, it, you can't get cut by this tape, it, and it's um, it sticks to a lot of things uh, yeah. really nicely. It's really cool tape. Like it's yeah. my favorite tape ever, and I'm a nerd about tape. Uh, I'm going to show everyone my screen now because um, we are, hang on, I want to show everyone my screen because I want to show you where you can get some of these projects, but I'm having trouble because that's what it is. That's how it is sometimes. So we have two new things to show you, or maybe three new things. You can see where I looked up library background earlier. Uh, this is on Instructables. We have a new Makey Makey intro class. So if you have a Makey Makey and you're brand new to Makey Makey and want to get started, um, this is the beginner projects to do. So here is one where you draw your circuit, where you test if things are conductive, you build pressure sw switches and even get started with scratch. And there's also an advanced class so if I go back to Makey Makey, I can see the advanced class. If you want to take a class, uh, th this just opened on Friday, and you can learn how to use LEDs or remap your Makey Makey. What we noticed was there were lots of teachers who didn't really understand what remapping was. So if you don't like the key presses, space up, down, left, right, you want to use different key presses. You can actually use any key you want, or not any key, but most of the keys on the keyboard by remapping it. Um, and the other thing that's that I've been working on. So this is kind of more for adult learners on Instructables. It's kind of more um, for an adult to take. But you could also just go to our teacher hub. Kids can do it, of course. But I've I've, I've been working on lately getting some some kid focused content. So I'm going to get to that. But here's our teacher hub, and, um, and you can post your own projects here. I saw Kyle Kitchens, another famous Canadian, because Andrew's here. Tom and uh, Nadia is also here. She said hello to you in the chat. Uh, but these are all projects by teachers uh, for kids to do. And they're really cool projects. So you can sort them by grades. You can sort them by subjects. Um, and that's, that's on our Instructables. Now, on our own page, on our resources. So if you go to um, resources and how-to guides, you'll come to this, our... Um, all our resources that I've been working on. And we have, you can change the chapters here. So I'm gonna show you something in a second, but these are actually made 
like for a student to take. So if you are a kid at home with a Makey Makey or you are a parent who wants your kid to try to do some classes, um, these are student driven. Or if you're an adult, we wanna take the kid version, we don't mind. Uh, these are kid driven classes and we're on lesson three and we're trying to post one a day. And it's similar content, but it's focused on uh, actual curriculum connections and working on um, really understanding how we're, how to become invention literate. So here at Makey Makey, we uh, believe that everyone is creative and everyone can invent things. And we, we think the world is a construction kit. It doesn't want to let the chapters work for me while I'm online. That's really weird. Oh, there it goes. So I'm going to go to hacking literacy because that's what we're talking about today. And there's a couple of really cool projects here that you might like if you're liked the book doll idea. And one of those is this Making Them Literacy project with Dolly, but also might be this puppet show, which is pretty cool, how to make your own interactive puppets. So this Dolly book, I'm gonna show it to you, but this is a really a pretty simple scratch project unless you wanna make it more complicated. So this, if you're used to scratch, there's two different ways to code this that's really fun. I'm gonna stop the share and go back to my face uh, because uh, I wonder if it's still spotlighting you, Tom. Oh no! I can't get the book to show up because it's not a face. <laughs> Look at that, that's funny. All right, well, Dolly is a really cute book. I can hide myself. Now I have an invisibility cloak. I guess it could turn off my weird background. But Dolly is a super cute book that has uh, Makey Makey inside of it. And we just love Shanda McCloskey for that. And we've been talking about it for a year and I made this whole project about making your own doll. And you guys can look at that. I'll show you some of the others. But, uh, sorry, now I'm reading the, <laughs> I'm reading the chat and talking at the same time. Uh, we will share the Book Doll Instructables on Facebook, our Facebook educator group, but we'll also share it on our social media channels. Um, we're almost out of time, Tom. I just realized that. But yeah, I do want everyone, if you haven't read Dolly 1.0, I, we have a webinar where Shanda reads it, so um, we can share that with you too on the blog post about this, where Shanda reads the whole book. And Shanda, this is just the really funny thing that is my random moment of the day. Shanda just wrote a book with my friend, Chris Barton, who wrote Shark vs. Train. If anyone's read Shark vs. Train, it's one of my kids' favorite books of all time. And the new book, oh no, now I'm going to forget what it is. It's Dragon. So Shark versus Train is a book about like, is it the shark or who would win like in a shark versus a train? Well, it depends. Like, where are they? If they're in the water, obviously the shark is going to win. But if they're on, you know, a railroad track, then the other's going to win. So the book is, uh, the new book is Fire Truck, truck versus Dragon. And Shanda did the drawings and I just think it's really cool. What a small little world we live in when, you're, when your world's mixed like that. So that's my random moment of the day. <laughs> but it's cool. It's like really like, the, she has really cute illustrations and he has just, he has, uh, Chris Barton has tons of great books out there um, for, for people who love books. And we hope you love books. That's why we're here. Do you want to finish anything off Tom and Anne? Uh, so I do want to encourage people, if you make a, um, a book doll, a book character, um, please post uh, photos uh, either to Twitter and make sure to tag Makey Makey so we can see it. Uh, or if you have, if you're a member of our educators Facebook group, uh, we'd love to see your photos there. And um, we'll, so we're going to be back here next week, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern with another project. And uh, we're looking forward to that. We've actually got some cool projects. We'd also love to hear what you think. What, what projects uh, are you working on while you're at home? Uh, and are they big, are they small? Uh, and they don't have to be makey-makey uh, necessarily, makey-makey oriented. They could be anything like book dolls. Um, or any other kind of cool craft project that maybe uh, incorporates uh, teaching and learning. I think all crafts pro pro craft projects on some level 
get people thinking ideally? Yeah. I just really, um, I really like the idea of the book doll, Anne, and that's what we're going to do today. It's really cute. And then maybe I'll get lucky my kid will want to attach it to Makey Makey, but who knows? Sometimes <laughs> pictures. When I want to see what you make. Yeah. Well, my kid, it's also, uh, she is, she's like, she'll make an amazing thing. You'll be surprised, but we will all share those things. And Kimberly, we're sorry you can't get into school and get those things out of the empty building. I know it must be really hard for teachers right now, um, not seeing their students. So that's why we're trying to have a little fun every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock Eastern for 30 minutes. Uh, and we're going to share new ideas next week that will involve Makey Makey, but also not. Um, I think next week is next week's going to be fun. And then one week we we're going to shout out to Liam right now. One week we are going to talk about Story City which I actually almost feel like maybe we should do that next week. Maybe we could get Liam to join us. That would be neat. That'd be super cool. So we would, we'll try to get it. We'll try to have more special guests. And again, if you want to email us at support at joylabs.com, we can um, take your ideas for things you want to learn to invent. And we would love to share those. So thanks everybody. Uh, will you bring the minion over to say goodbye? <laughs> well, is it you don't have to, it's connected. Look, uh, I'm trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you get you just get just laughter goodbye. i love it all right thanks everybody and uh we stay safe and stay home so we'll see you next tuesday bye bye everybody bye, bye.